everybody, and welcome to my channel. Um, so instead of calling me Mei Mei Lee, you can call me official dumbass of the West. Or the East. Um, <laughs> dumbass of the West will work. I recorded 20 minutes of this with no audio. <laughs> well, game audio, yes. Me audio, no. There was none of me there. Absolutely none. So it was just music and clicking noises. That's about it. <laughs> anyway... So, my channel is kind of dead, and I've kind of stopped recording as much as I usually do because of stuff, college, and I got birds. Three birds. So it's kind of hard to record during the day. <laughs> but this game came out not too long ago, like a month, two months ago, I don't know. And I felt, and I was looking through Steam today, and I'm like, you know what, Cinderella Phenomenon was such a good was such a good time we all enjoyed it I think we all enjoyed it I enjoyed it I think you guys enjoyed it so I'm like you know what I at least owe it to my channel to do Cinderella Phenomenon 2 or Evermore because it'd just be wrong you know so we're gonna we're gonna start that today or in my case restart it <laughs> cuz yeah, me, official dumbass. Oh, excuse that. That's not supposed to be there. So we're gonna start it again. Luckily, this round of me recording it again will not have as many mistakes as there was in the first go-around. Um, if you wait till the end of the vi- not wait, but if you watch to the end of the video, I'll insert some of the stupid mistakes I made in the first recording, like fucking up my name when I was typing it in. <laughs> So I'll add that and just a few other things so you can see some stuff that you missed that I thought was funny. Anywho. Any, anyway. Also, I took my, uh, my sweatshirt off. It's heckin' hot in here when you're reading. Once upon a time in a land far, far away, there lived a princess. And the, and the reading's gonna be ten times better because I already read it. <laughs> She was known as the Ice Princess, named for her frigid heart and unyielding coldness towards others. The princess is shunned by all who sought to help her. She was scared to go out into the world, so she locked herself up in her palace. <laughs> Ooh. Then one day, the Ice Princess became the victim of the infamous fairy tale curse and was forced to go from riches to rags. The princess struggled to come to terms with her new life. She meant, as the princess, struggled to come to terms with her new life. She met a very special boy -o. The two endured much strife, helping each other overcome various ordeals. In the end, they emerged victorious. Woohoo! The special man thawed the princess's ice-cold heart and dried her dampened spirit. The two vowed to love each other for the rest of the time. I just realized, uh... I'll explain it in just a second. <laughs> they lived happily ever after. But what happens after happily ever after? Well, the book closes and All Star starts playing. <sighs> Man, you know, Shrek is on Hulu and I feel like I should totally watch it again. Who wants to watch Shrek with me? <laughs> Man, I want to watch like, how many Shreks are there? I want to watch them all. But anyway, I did say, I just realized I said earlier that I didn't record my audio. But then I was like, but I'm going to put in the funny moments. So, the audio wouldn't record on my usual thing, so I had to use a different recording software, and the game in the recording randomly froze constantly for no reason, and I didn't find out until 20 minutes later. <laughs> and then I used my other recording software, which wasn't recording my audio, and I realized why, and I realized I was very stupid. <laughs> For technical reasons, that doesn't have to be in this video because it's long and hard to explain and boring as all fuck. <laughs> anyway, let's hope I don't fuck up my name this time. Because I didn't know how to get to the other line. So, big, big old sexto's back, yep. How do I get to the other- can I not change my last name? Could I not change my last name in the first game? <laughs> I probably couldn't, so I guess I didn't fuck up my name, huh? Or I'm just being silly. Maybe I'm just being an absolute goofball. Ah, uh, yes. Sorry, that is my chair that I'm goofing around with. Another thing that I had a problem with was... I couldn't remember anyone's names. <laughs> 
Except for like Rod, Fritz, and Walt. Yeah, Walt. I couldn't remember Claude's or Chevalier or Rumpel, and I had to look it up. But uh, so I talked to my friend who was a mod in my Discord, Shinkeki, and I asked her, "Yo, what, what, who should, what should be our first route?" Because I was originally going to go for your boy Claude, because he was the first route in my first playthrough. And I was just going to go down the line like I did last time. But I thought it'd be fun if um, if we, if I asked somebody else's opinion for once. <laughs> you know, branch out, I guess. <laughs> and what we're going to do is after we finish this route, we're going to vote for the next person. You know, like I said, branch out, Uh, you know see what other opinions are like i guess anyway we're gonna we're gonna start with rumple's route or chevalier's route and see where this train takes us i actually wouldn't have picked him until like probably second to last because i never really had strong feelings towards this boy so let's boogie sexto a voice reaches out to me from the depths of my mind, soft and gentle. Though I have not heard it in years, I recognize it immediately. Mother? Ah, my dearest heart. I, I, I barely remember you. I barely remember you. You weren't, you weren't good. <laughs> Mother. I rush towards her. M Mother steps away from me before I can touch her. I came to see how the traitor was doing, but it seems you are still just as incompetent as when I left you. Also, a uh, quick thing. If one of y'all, or some of y'all, could leave, like, a good long explanation of what in God's name happened in the first game, I would be so appreciative. And I'm going to ask a lot of questions of things I don't remember. And if you could just, like, make a list... <laughs> of stuff I don't remember, and if you have the answers to it, please God give them to me, because I'm never gonna get them. <laughs> I'm never gonna remember until somebody outright tells me what the specific thing was and why it was. <laughs> or I will be forever lost in this game. It's been how many years? I don't even know. A strand of electricity snakes up my arm, breaking apart the rest of my words. I collapse to my knees with a cry of pain. What a disappointment you are, Sexto. Had you revived me, you would have not been so weak. And GL would not be so weak. You are a pathetic ruler daughter. Okay, add to that list. What is Angel? Is it our country? I think it's our country, but someone also said Lucis, and I didn't know what Lucis was, or where it was, or who it is. <laughs> I don't know. Mother. And you are a failure as a witch. The sparks return the moment the words leave her mouth. This time the electricity envelops my whole body, making the words shimmer dangerously. Tears gather in my eyes. Mother, please, I'm trying my best. Wasn't she supposed to, like, learn how to be or, like, learn how to use magic by, like, her 18th birthday or some shit? Oh, man. It's like the more I read, the more it, com it comes back to me. You have failed, dearest heart, because you do not know what it means to be a witch. You f we feed off neg in negative ne whew, n music. I need to read. Chill. Feed off negativity and chaos. Love serves us no power. You will see that in time. And when that happens, my love, our sardonic, sardonic, sardonic. Haven't have hadn't seen that word before. Smile touches her lips as she fades away. Remember that I will not be there for you. Thanks, mom. You're the best. Love you too. I awake with a heart pounding, er <laughs> with my heart pounding erratically in my ears. Mother, I press my hand to my forehead and squeeze my eyes shut. A trend of electricity snaps across my fingers, and I'm only able to will it away after calming my heart. When I open my eyes, it is not darkness I see, but my own room. It was just a dream. I quiet my breathing as I glance around. Everything is exactly as it always is, except for one thing. My gaze snags on a fing- on a, on a finger- ah. On a figure sil silhouetted in moonlight. He is hunched over a table, papers scattered around him. My boy? I stand and make my way over to him. 
I need a sip of my drink so bad. Excuse me, this lad is making me thirsty. Oh, hydration is that good stuff, I swear. I'm gonna call it Rumple in this, just because it's easier for me to say <laughs> or pronounce quickly in sentences, as, as you do. Rumple has fallen asleep on the table with an arm folded beneath his head. At least this time he remembered to take off his glasses. The last time Rumple fell asleep writing letters, he crushed his glasses. I notice he's been drifting off more frequently at his desk ever since he moved into the palace. It's only been a few weeks since he accepted my father's invitation to become the palace official's physician. Oh right, this boy was a doctor. Oh god, who are you? I don't even remember. <laughs> I said this when I, uh... When I did my first recording, was the only thing I remember about Rumpel was the uh, literally the only memory that has stuck with me about this man is when he gave us the advice that if you want to stab to kill somebody, don't stab them in the chest, stab them in the neck because the chest has too many bones and you'll likely not hit the heart because of ribs and stuff and <laughs> for some unknown godly reason that has stuck with me and I don't know why <laughs> it, I just I don't get it but I I now know how to stab to kill so thank you Rumpel we'll remember I reach out to touch his shoulder and then pause as much as I would like to have him come to bed I might not be able to fall he might not be able to fall back asleep once I wake him I suppress a laugh uh, oh, I never read this. Rumple's not even supposed to be my room this late, but he really does accidentally drift off here. So last time, the time that you didn't see, I chose to wake him up, and then I reloaded and chose to let him sleep because I didn't get the because I didn't get that little icon that shows you got it right, good job. But I didn't get that answer with either of them. But I have the save, in case it's ever wrong, so I kinda- Nah, we should wake him up, because you get dialogue with him if you wake him up, and I want you guys to see that. I gently set a hand on his shoulder. Dude. Rumpel mumbles something in his sleep as I shake him. I pull my hand away as he blinks his eyes open. What's up, sweetie? Princess? Is it morning? No, it's just past midnight, which is why you ought to be in bed. Sorry, I got to sniffles. Rumple glances around so slowly. After a few moments, he smiles sheepishly. Well, I've done it again, haven't I? Yep. I know I should get him to bed now, but I remember the nightmare. It was. Oh my god, I gotta. I have my Discord open on my other screen, and I keep seeing things move around, and it's distracting the fuck out of me. I remember the nightmare. It was more vivid than usual. And though it's possible it's just a normal nightmare, I have my doubts. Did you have another nightmare, Sexto? Rumple is always able to read me so easily. It was a small thing. He reaches out to press the, uh, press a palm into my cheek and smiles softly. Also, <laughs> look at his tiny little ponytail. Oh, he's just a baby ponytail. Did he have long hair? I gotta look up. If he had long hair. Excuse me. Excuse that. Sorry. I gotta look up if this boy had long hair in the first game. Do Cinderella phenomenon rumple. Uh, images. Bitch did have long hair. This boy had like a mullet something going on. He cut his hair, actually. I thought his hair would have grown out, but he actually cut his hair. Okie dokie, I'm down with that. I like his hair now more than ever. Unless, in like the morning, he like lets it down and it's the longest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> Would you like to talk about it? We can talk tomorrow. Or we can talk right now. You know I'm always willing to listen. I frown at him, but he just continues smiling, his sleepy smile at me. I sigh. Fine, I will tell you, but first sit. I point to the bed. Rumple is more than happy to oblige. He seats himself beside me on the bed. I recount the dream to him. When I am done, Rumple is no longer Rumple's no longer tired. Rumple no longer looks tired. I wonder if it's a nightmare fueled by the 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 theme jiggy. You know the whatever the fuck the Tenebrarum was. I think it was some sort of crystal. 
baby? Could it be as a tenebrarum? Trying to br I seriously doubt I have- I have- I seriously doubt I've ever said this word right. I'm prone to nightmares, but they have been notably worse since Cena came to Angiel. Cena is Parfait's only cousin, and the last remaining heir to the Lucis. Don't know what the Lucis is. Is the Lucis the crystal? I feel like there was a crystal somewhere. <laughs> There's a crystal somewhere in this game, I just don't know what it is. None of us had heard of him until he spontaneously showed up at the tavern's front door one day. Apparently, Parfait was keeping his identity secret because she did not want to place the burden of a bearer on him, especially not at such a young age. But Sina appeared regardless. Ever since he started living at the Marchin, which was the bar thing with the awesome-ass broom, and I swear, I swear on me mom, if I don't see that broom again, I'm gonna lose my goddamn marbles. I will lose me marbles. I need... The broom in my life. With a bow? Oh my god. <laughs> my man! Or woman! My broom! What could the nightmares have to do with him? Rumpel leans forward and wraps an arm around my waist, pulling me from my thoughts. He plants a tender kiss on my forehead. Whether or not the Tenebrarum fueled it, a nightmare is still just a nightmare. I think in, your own, in her own way, your mother wanted the best for you. I think she would be proud. I don't know, bro. <laughs> You weren't there. She didn't seem very proud. She actually called me something along the lines of a failure. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see Sin at the Martin tomorrow, so perhaps you should bring up your concerns then. You didn't start having nightmares this lucid until he showed up after all. Rumpel continues to console me. He has always been good at it. Soon I am relaxed enough to doze on his shoulder. The circumstances never matter. I always feel so safe with him. Those are my last thoughts before I fall asleep in his arms. You know what's falling asleep? My feet. <laughs> I am sitting on my legs and I might as well not have any. The first thing I notice when I wake in the morning is Rumpel, who is seated at my desk, sealing envelopes. I rub my bleary eyes as I sit up in bed and yawn. <laughs> you hold on a second. There's like a bunch of pictures of Rumpel on my second screen. Oh, yo, I should probably keep this up. I'm gonna keep Google up just in case. I might need it. Good morning, my sweet princess. Good morning, home slice. What's up? I notice, despite his best efforts to smile honestly, that his eyes are foggy. I can tell by the twitch in his lips that he is not well rested. This is my fault for waking him last night. Well, girl, I don't know what to tell you. I didn't get a yes or no from y'all game, so is that on? Hold on. Is that actually on? The little thing that tells you if you got it right or not? Right choice indicator. It's on. Okay, well... Maybe there is no right choice. Maybe the right choice is what we believe in our heart. I suppose. <laughs> Not even a good morning in response. Answer the question. He shakes his head. Don't worry, princess. I'm glad you woke me up. I had been devastated. I would have been devastated knowing you were suffering from a nightmare when I could have consoled you. But you look like you haven't slept at all. How long were you up? I think I managed one extra hour of sleep. It's not sleep, bro. That's like... That's like a blink. <laughs> I groan as I fall back against my pillows. Don't look so gloomy, Sexto. The sun is shining, the clouds have parted, and there is absolutely no rain in the forecast. Nice. Today promises to be a good day. It won't be ruined by something as trivial as insomnia. Oh boy. It's all, it's 1130, bros. <laughs> insomnia. I'm on my way. I also gotta sneeze. Oh. As always. Oh my god, my nose is like attacking me. You know that feeling you get when you're about to sneeze and it's like the, ooh, it's that feeling, man, and it just keeps getting worse and worse until you sneeze or you don't sneeze and it's just, whew, that is a feeling and a half. As always, Rumple is ever the optimist, but he really does need to rest. I stand with a sigh. Fine then. Shall we get breakfast? Ooh, sausages and eggs and toast. Ooh, breakfast for me is like pizza rolls. <laughs> when Rumpel first came to the palace, I invited him to breakfast. He was extremely nervous about sharing a meal with my family. Oh, now I got the sniffles. Gosh. I had to tell him multiple times that the king insisted he join us, not because he was to become the royal physician, but because he was becoming part of the family. Another question to answer in the comments. Are they... Did, they be, uh, did, they, did he propose in the first game? Like, in the end, in his route? Or did, like, did all the boys 
ask her to marry them, or are we just shacking up? I- <laughs> that's just my question. Now, the question always- now, the question always brings a smile to Rumpel's face. Oh my god, get out of here, you anime boy! He flashes that broad smile at me. Now as he offers his arm, I'm not even gonna look at him. Not even gonna give this boy the time of day. Breakfast would be nice, yes. We head for the dining hall. I got so much sniffle going on, bro. I can sniff the world. The hall is lively as always this morning, though for an entirely different reason than usual. Oh, we still got his bunny. What was that bunny's name? Did y'all hear that? Hold on. Oh, darn it. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. I'm so sorry. I, um, I'll probably cut most of that out. But I muted the game for a second because <laughs> my dog, if she falls asleep, she'll, like, start, like, yipping in her sleep and it'll sound like laughing. And I swear it is the most funniest thing. I'll actually, I'll insert a clip, like, right now. Of when she did it during a Twitch stream. Just a real fat, just a real quick clip. Just so you can see what it hears, it sounds like. It's so funny. <laughs> My dog was... <laughs> She's asleep. <laughs> She's asleep. Anyway, let me read what I accidentally clicked back. Uh, you're telling me you ran after the messenger because you had an important letter to send to v Viorica, says Rod. Also, the bunny's name was like Sebastian, was it? Wasn't it? Or am I wrong? Or am I just making shit up? Also, why does he still have the bunny? Doesn't he have his voice back? Why am I asking questions? Maybe they'll- maybe they'll get an answer from me if I just- just read. It was very important to invite- it was a very important invite for a luncheon. Normally, it's Rumpel who sparks conversation on mornings like these. He and Father get along very well and usually discuss recent affairs and politics. The morning, however, Father and Ophelia are at a meeting and it's just Rod and Emmy. Oh, hiccups. And Rumpel and I here. I added way too many ands. <laughs> Rumpel has been quietly listening to the conversation this whole time. He flips between being loquacious? Is that? Ugh, I've never heard that word before in my life, guys. It's crazy. And quiet at the drop of a coin. Sometimes it feels as if he has two personalities, but I know the truth. He just likes to eavesdrop. I turn my attention away from my finished plate to look at Emmy and Rod. They have been discussing letters this whole morning. Emmy usually sends letters to Viorica and Anise. Who's Anise? Is it? Is Anise one of the. Is Anise a person? <laughs> I don't know. Rumple, unsurprisingly, is one that brought Emmy and Anise together. You know, whoever the fuck Anise is. Is Anise a girl or a guy? I don't. Rod sends the majority of his letters to letters letters to Brugantia. Bru 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 he has been considering going there to study foreign dance as part of some exchange program. What a thing to study, guys! Foreign dance. He gonna become. He's gonna come back to the castle in like two years, and he's gonna be square dancing, and we're gonna regret it. Claude and his younger brother Lance were the ones to suggest the idea when they last visited Angiel. <sighs> um, <coughs> excuse me. So Claude isn't here anymore. Wasn't Claude like the prince of something of some place? Claude was, Cla Claude was particularly interested, saying that because Angel hosted Brugantian royalty so often, they would be honored as host as well. One drink, please. Oh, water's that good stuff. If you haven't drinking anything, take a second. Take a sip. Claude proposed a trade-off. He insisted that if Brungantian royal's family took Rod in, they would force us to take his brother Lance off his hands. Who's Lance? <laughs> I want to meet Lance. Rod, go away. I want to meet Lance. Sometimes I wonder about the relationship they have. Rod looks older, doesn't he? <laughs> Rod looks... manlier. <laughs> and you know what? I'm okay with that. <laughs> he looks 
very nice. I think... Let me just look at what he looked like... In the first game. I, I gotta see. I gotta compare. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me sh let me show y'all. Let me- let's do a- Fuck. Let's do a comparison pick. There we go. Let us compare, shall we? Look at the difference. Look at that man with his sharper eyes and new tie thing. Hot diggity damn. You know what, I'm gonna keep Google over here and we're gonna like just compare the art from last time cause it looking good. Um, the messenger from this morning is delivering letters over the border. Those letters were for Brugantia. I'm gonna, whew, I'm gonna butcher that so hard. Whew, oh God. Emmy looks at him startled. When he raises an eyebrow, she smiles sheepishly. Really, I had no idea. Is Emmy older than us? I feel like she's older than us? I can't remember. She was sending- if she was sending anyone in Brugan- Gr Brugantia a letter kill me. It's probably Lance. The two of them get along very well. I want to meet Lance. Who's Lance? Well, I know who Lance is, but what's Lance look like? I'm certain the messenger would deliver messages to the post office before making a trip over the border. He smiles to Emmy. Your letters are in good hands, princess. Huh. My bunny is making noises. Emmy turns her grateful smile to Rumble before pausing. Curiosity lightens her eyes. What about your letters? He was up so late writing them that he fell asleep with a pen in his hand. I give him a pointed look, as usual. Rumpel smiles weakly. These ones were important, I swear. Well, they can't be that important considering you still have them, I think. Because you were up so late working on them, you never got them sent out. He clears his throat, his expression melting into something more somber. I've been writing letters to the housing official to finalize a contract. Yeah? Right, his deal with Anise. Who the fuck is Anise? He's in the process of giving her the deed to his old clinic. Is Anise? Isn't- wasn't it- Wasn't Anise, like, his old lover? Was it a lover? Or was it a sister? Oh, god damn. <laughs> Ugh, I just, I don't, I am like an amnesiac, I can't fuck. <laughs> I hope it's not too complicated. I hope it's not too complicated. It's not, just time consuming. Just make sure it doesn't stop you from sleeping. It's too late for that, my dear, my darling. <laughs> Rumple laughs, eyes glittering with mirth. With birth? With mirth? As you command, my sweet princess, I swear to God. After breakfast, Rumple and I head to the march in. Where we are to meet with Anise and Sina, respectively. I feel like I'm going to be totally wrong on who Anise is. What a brilliant day. The sun is shining and the town is full of laughter. And I have a sweet roll. My sweet sexto here to accompany me. Oh, damn. Wrong. I was going to say I have my lovely queen here to accompany me. She's a queen now? That's the same thing. Wait, did her dad die? Oh my god, did her dad- No, her dad's alive. Wait, I'm so confused. If her dad's alive, would she be queen? Oh god. You guys probably think I'm so dumb. And you know what? It's not that I'm dumb. It's that... Nothing sticks. <laughs> That's all it is. Rumple laughs. I beg to differ. Queen is far from more- Is a far more regal title but I'm not even queen yet. Thank you, Sexto. Oh, God. You're already one in spirit. I cannot help my smile as I turn my attention to the scenery. The town square is bustling with activity when we arrive, despite the cold weather. Though it is su it's sunny, a chill wind brushes my skin and rumples my dress. <laughs> Can it rumples? It's so cold. I do not realize I am huddled close to Rumple until he loops an arm around my waist and pulls me to his side. As always, I'm amazed at how comfortably I fit. Ah, it's like the space was made for me. Because at times like these, I feel I should buy a new scarf. You don't even have a scarf on, bro. We should we should go scarf shopping. I could get you one, too. Better yet, we could buy matching scarves. That's such a great idea. I would wear a paper bag over my head before matching with you. What the fuck? That's such a cute idea. I would do that in a heartbeat. 
I'd wear a scarf with like his initial on it, and then he wore a scarf with like my initial on it. That's so great. You're so radiant you can make anything a fashion statement, princess, even a paper bag. I need a drink, bro. It would be a shame not to gaze upon your beautiful features, though. His voice fades as he spots a nearby stall. Fabrics are draped across the makeshift shelves and tacked onto boards. Scarves are included in the assortment. Oh god, he spotted them. I look over there, how convenient. The last time I arrived early at the Marchin for a meeting with Cinna, he was not there. He was partaking in one of his silly hobbies. How long has Cinna been here that we already know he has, like, silly hobbies? I suppose it would not hurt to keep him waiting. We can spare a few minutes. Matching scarves, matching scarves. Onwards, then. Matching scarves, oh my god! We had just arrived at the stall when I paused, noticing two ladies standing there not too far away. I could tell by the looks they throw in our direction that they are speaking about us. <sighs> Y'all got nothing better to do, I swear. I move closer to the edge of the stall while Rumple holds up a few scarves. He and the stall owner do not even notice me. Oh right, these people have no eyes. Woman A. Don't understand what she could have seen in him. Aye, unless she took pity on him. I'm gonna take pity on your face, I swear to God. The Ice Princess taking pity on some poor doctor. <laughs> the two young women giggle. Not only is he much older than her, but he's not even handsome, is he? Have, do I need to show you a picture of what this man looks like? Because apparently you can't see him from where you're standing. <laughs> Dumb bitches. <laughs> Why am I getting so mad? And not very competent. Last I heard, if I were him, I'd be ashamed to be seen as princess's consort. Y'all got nothing better to do? Like, what? Go find something else to do. Go, like... Go sweep the side of the road like NPCs are supposed to do, okay? I startle when Rumpel puts a hand on my shoulder. Is something wrong? His eyes flicker briefly to the woman. He's smiling, but it is a half-hearted smile. Did you find some great s scarves for us? He squeezes my shoulder. Don't worry about them, Sexto. They're faceless. They don't. They don't matter. The only people that matter are the people with eyes. I can still hear the ladies tittering behind me. They are being extraordinarily rude. Oh, well, 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 z well. He told us to just, you know, leave him be, so let's see if that's the right answer. To just forget about it, because, you know, he doesn't seem to care. But Rumpel's right. They are a waste of my time. I turn toward the boy, who looks relieved. He immediately changes the subject, picking up fuchsia pink scarves and holding them for me to see. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna check real quick to see if the other answer was right. Real quick. We always gotta- we gotta really make sure we're right. To see if we get that little icon. And I kinda wanna see what happens when she <laughs> confronts them. I slide away from Rumple and make my way towards the woman. Sexto, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm breaking them out. I'm about to throw hands. Rumple is far more tolerant than I will ever be. The woman sees their chatter as I approach, swiveling around to a curtsy. Good morning, your highness. The second woman echoes the greeting. Tell me, is it still a good morning when you hear someone insulting you behind your back? The exchange more they exchange mortified glances. We humbly apologize, Your Highness. If you meant your apology, you would have not spoken so brazenly in the first place. They continue to sputter the same apology. I wave them away, irritated. I do not want to hear you speak such demeaning words about my companion again, understood? Clearly, Your Highness. Get fucked. Oh both women curtsy before rushing off. How am I ever going to know what's the right answer if it's not going to give me the boopity doop, you know? I like that one better, though. I like telling people off. It's hilarious, and it just makes me feel good. <laughs> Rumple steps in front of me. Are you okay? I feel great. <laughs> Why wouldn't I be? You don't need to fight my battles for me. They were just talking about you. They were talking about me, too. 
I appreciate your concern, but you shouldn't have to go out of your way for me. It wasn't just for you, ho. It was for my own satisfaction. He has gone out of his way many times. For, way for me many times. Is it so wrong for me to do the same? I doubt Father would stand idle if he heard someone criticizing Ophelia in front of him. Some people need to be reprimanded. I can tell we are in an impasse. Nothing I say will convince him. Let's forget about it for now. We ought to head to the Martian. We can always return later. He nods. Uh, I feel like I should reload. Cause I, I didn't get. I'm gonna reload, but I'm glad we we looked at it. Yeah, I'm just gonna load, cause I I want to see the scarf scene as well. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm glad we read it. You know, back to the pink scarf. <laughs> What do you think of this one? For you? <laughs> Looks like something Claude would wear. I mean... You're not wrong. <laughs> no, no, for you, my lovely princess. He raises a scarf higher, gla glasses glinting. You're always in blue, but I think pink would really bring out the color of your eyes. The color of my eyes? Oh. I mean, my hair's already pink, bro. I feel like that's a little much. Pink is more Emmy's color. Oh, I think it would look nice on you. It's ugly. Damn, what the fuck? <laughs> Rumple laughs. As always, your honesty is a treasure. You show me things like that just because you enjoy it when I insult them, don't you? Of course, your scowl is radiant. I roll my eyes at Rumple as Rumple turns back to the stall. We gotta head to the march now. We can always return later. Oh! It shows up later! Ooh. Oh, fuck. Does that mean I have to go back? Oh, okay. Rumpel nods his ascent before following after me. Here's what we're gonna do. I was gonna end the episode here, because this is a good place to end it. But what we'll do... We're gonna save on, like, the last page. So I don't get confused with my other saves. And then... We're gonna load this one and see if this one was wrong. I saved right. Yeah, I say I saved. I saved right. Yeah, okay, I did. Load. Yes, please. We're just gonna read this part real quick. Uh, I would rather he rest. He needs it. I pull my hand away and make my way back to my bed. I pause briefly to glance at the gardens, the city beyond them. The moonlight settles on Angio like a blanket, making all the buildings glimmer faintly like stars. Somewhere in the sprawling town is the Marchin, where Dolores and Sina sleep under one roof. Sina's... Dolora? The fuck is Dolora? Oh my god. Sina's Parfait's only cousin and the only possible heir to the, Lu to the Lucis. Apparently, Parfait was keeping his identity a secret, blah 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 blah. Uh, my close to that, yep. We're pretty much saying everything. I should go for a walk. I leave my room quietly, yes, so not to disturb Rumpel, as long as I'm only out long enough to clear my mind. When I return, I'm able to fall asleep. So, was that the right answer? First thing I know is when I wake. It's Rumpel who is seated at my desk, sealing envelopes. Are my bleary eyes? Did you get? S I notice that his eyes are glimmering, and he looks more lively than I have seen him in many, many days. Good morning. You look well rested. Oh, but I am. Your table's very comfy. I'm glad. The bed is a lot more comfortable, you know. So is that the right answer? A valid point. I'm certainly prefer waking to the sight of your beautiful eyes, bright as most precious gold. If that is the case, you should make a great effort to pass out on the bed. But I am not even supposed to fall asleep in your room, am I? And yet you do so anyway. If you insist on staying, you ought to at least sleep on the bed. Father ought to have have reprimanded me by now. The fact he has not he has not the means, he obviously does not care that much about Rumpel being here. Then I'll try my best for you, sweet princess. He leans back in his chair, arms crossed. I hope you do not mind me saying, but you seem a little groggy this morning. As always, he's able to read me so easily. A nightmare kept me up last night. A nightmare? Sex though, you should have woken me. Fuck, it was right! Ugh. 
We're gonna read until the breakfast scene, and then I'm gonna end the episode. And then I'll just, like, fast forward to, uh, where we, where we're gonna, where we stopped. And we're just gonna continue reading this till the breakfast. It was just a nightmare. I did not want to disturb you for such a small thing. Your consideration warms my heart. But still, was this another Tenebrarum nightmare? I don't think so. It's hard to say. It seemed more vivid than usual nightmares. I spend the next minutes detailing the nightmare to the boy. Even now, Mother's words are clear in my mind. I could not, forgot, I could not forget them even if I wanted to. Rumple looks thoughtful. The dreams you remember are usually ones fueled by the Tenebrarum. Tenebrarum. Perhaps it's somehow related to Sinna? I nod. I do not know how he would be related to the Tenebrarum, but we can ask him today at the March Inn. Oh, and Sexto. He plops himself on the bed, wraps an, wraps an arm around my waist, and presses a kiss to my forehead. I hope you didn't take your mother's words to heart. From what you tell me, your mother knew... Your, ugh, I'm sorry, I'm so bad at reading right now. It's been like 35 minutes. From what you tell me, your mother you knew loved you in her own way. I don't think she would ever want to see you suffer. I seriously doubt that. I know. Are you sure you're okay? Sexto, you... Before you can say anything, I press my lips to his mouth and then kiss- Damn it, I really got that answer wrong, didn't I? This kiss is my only answer. When I pull away, uh, Rumpel is grinning at me. I'll take that as a yes. He wiggles his eyebrows at me, and I respond by jabbing him in the shoulder. Shall we get breakfast? Yeah, well, alright. Okay, yep, we did it. Alright, oh, I've gotten- I've gotten one answer wrong. I originally got the first answer, or the second answer right, but I wanted to see the other one. So it looks like, since we're gonna do, since I've decided to do this, um, playthrough kind of, like, more genuine, and when I say genuine, I mean without a guide, so we're gonna be going back and forth a lot. We're gonna be probably reading both of the answers to see which one is right and which one is wrong, and we'll kind of get both scenes, so there'll be a little bit of jumping back and forth, but... It shouldn't be too bad. We'll get to see more dialogue that way anyway. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are excited for the rest of the game. I am surely excited. It's nice to get back to recording. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Have a good day. Have a good night. Pet your animals. Have a good sleep and stay hydrated. Good night, my friends.